Ooh, Ten Hag given two games to turn this thing around. And a lot of people reacted to it. And it's getting hot, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look at it. What is happening? Welcome to Football Uncensored. I'm Chris, the American Mag, reacting to the latest trending stories in the Premier League. Um, well, Ten Hag done a horrible job. I keep saying, I keep telling my new fans he should have been sacked a long time ago, but uh, they didn't. They believed the FA Cup. They were on the FA Cup high, and they didn't want to let him go. And a lot of these guys that we're going to review uh, today, they're going to see the reactions. They had the same mentality. And I thought, this is the same manager that was there last season and the previous. Everybody got excited when they finished third. And now this this past season, um, they were horrible. They got to the FA Cup. They won. They beat Man City. And everybody was questioning, was that going to be enough? And it certainly was enough, according to Ineos, to um, maintain him as a head coach for Man United. Uh, but I didn't think that was, uh, you know, it should. I, I don't think that was a good decision anyway. But um, the Sun reporting that Eric Ten Hag given two games to save Man United, Man United's job after second successive home thumping in a clash with Tottenham. Uh, so he's he will have two games to have his job at Man United. The Dutchman is under increasing pressure at Old Trafford following a poor start of the season. Uh, and uh, you know, let's actually show a few things here and there. Also, with that being in, in consideration. Uh, Sky Sports are saying that Manchester United's bosses back Eric Ten Hag despite unacceptable defeat to Tottenham, according to senior reporter Melissa Reddy. Well, Sky Sports has that information. The Sun says that they have two games uh, to, um, that he has two games to save his job. Talksport right here saying it makes a lot of sense to, uh, or, or Gabby Agbong Lahore says uh, he names his choice of for Eric Ten Hag's potential replacements on, on the webpage. So they're already talking about his exit uh, at some point in given time. Uh, football on TNT Sports says, Man United play Porto and Aston Villa away this week before the next international break. And I guess these are going to be the next two matches that, um, you know, Eric Ten Hag will either lose his job or not, regardless. Which when you, Once you get into that part, it's, it's a tricky situation because you will lose at some point. So how long are you going to keep up with the intensity of winning every game? Are you going to win every match until you're done? No. So um, that's that. Also, Transfer News Live, according to the Telegraph um, Ducker, Telegraph Ducker, which is a Telegraph reporter, I'm assuming, yeah, Northern Football Correspondent, says uh, Eric Ten Hag will be in charge of Man United for the games against Aston Villa and Porto. So, but those are the, the one, the, 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 two, uh, the two games. And, of course, Gareth Southgate, Graham Potter being named as replacements for um, for Ten Hag. Let's take a, a watch at Goldbridge as he loses his mind during the game. Goes into the box. It's 1-0. Who did this? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my fucking God. I cannot believe what Van der Den has just done. He's <laughs> run from the back to the front, crossed the ball to the back post, and Brennan Johnson's got a tap in. Where's the fucking discipline in this team? Where's the concentration in this team? Absolutely incredible. Fucking idiots. You know what that comes from? Rashford and Ganacho running for the same, running away from the fucking ball. We were in possession of the ball. We've got the break and Rashford and Ganacho just switch off. And then no one tackles Van der Ven. And who's meant to be marking Brennan Johnson here? <laughs> Absolute fucking idiots. It's like watching a fucking hippo on roller skates all over the fucking place. <laughs> who edited that, man? Come on, man. Who edited that? Uh, well, the video that I'm watching is from some Super Spurs. So there you go. But we're going to take a listen to Terry Flewers as well as he's spoken. Um, I guess he wants Ten Hag out as well. Let's take a listen. I'm trying to compose myself because my head is hot. 
my head is really, really hot. <laughs> is it? And my first message is very simple. I like a lot of what Ineos has done since they came in. But they chose not to sack this manager and to give him a chance. The PR has been excellent. I told you. We've seen a very good summer. Most rivals agreed. Man United had a good summer in the transfer market. For years, I bemoaned the idea of sacking a manager because we lacked the structure and the key decision makers to make a model where you're rapidly going through managers' work. We now have that structure. We have spent more money. I don't believe when you look at the, the performances that we have put in just this season alone, that that is because we lack quality players. Doesn't mean we're the finished article. Doesn't mean I think we're as good as Man City, Arsenal or Liverpool or, or Chelsea right now. It'd be delusional to think that. We should be able to play better football than that. Yeah. Ineos, you need to stand up now. You need to dismiss this man. It isn't going to get better versus Porto. We're not going to become more consistent against Aston Villa. And although I said in the build-up to this game, there was this part of me that wanted to lose. And it goes what? against every fiber of my being wanting Man United to lose. My rationale is, even if we won today, even if we were very good today, I don't believe that Eric Ten Hag is ever going to make us a consistent team. And on the field of play today, we saw that. We didn't know when the press trigger, the press trigger was. We also didn't stop the ball being played for our midfield. Now, Spurs were good and deserve credit. Yeah, they were better. Then. But they ain't that good where they can bypass every press and pass for a team when it sits. Hold on. I think, I think that's nonsensical. Spurs maybe are not the best team in the Premier League, but they certainly are a better team than Man United. That's a proven fact. That's a proven that is proven. They are a better team than Man United. Man United are a team that are just poor, been poor. A team that will win certain trophies simply because they have good quality players. But the manager, there's not a manager. There's not a manager in there. There's not a coach in there that can that can make this team an elite team. There just isn't. Which is somewhat what he's saying. But he's still kind of lowballing what Tottenham did. I think Tottenham played. They just literally played them out the park. Uh, and uh, I mean, you can say that that was some some of some of that was Manu's fault, obviously. But uh, you can't downball downplay what Tottenham did. They were clearly better than uh, the Manchester United. Back at will that easy. Do you know why we know they're not that good? Because it isn't like they've been doing it all season. And I'm not trying to take anything away from Tottenham. Please don't think I am. Thoroughly deserve their win today. But you can't say that and then say, well, they haven't been doing it all season. They've been inconsistent. The fact of the matter is they are a better team than Man United. Simple as that. They are not the strongest team in the Premier League, Tottenham aren't. They're not probably probably top five, top six at the, at this moment. The fact of the matter is, even in that not being the best team, they're still better than Man United. It's, it's what it is. And you can't you can't say, well, I don't want to take down or diminish Tottenham's performance, but you are doing that by saying that. By saying that they, you know, they're not as good as is you made him look yesterday uh, or against uh, Man United the other day. So I don't agree with that. But this team had no idea what they were doing. Poor in the press, easy to pass through, and they look confused. Now, in any walk of life, if you don't know what you're meant to be doing, confusion sets in and performance drops. You could be the best salesman in the world, 10 years straight, number one or whatever company you're at. If you come and join my firm, and you only learn about one third of the products. You only know about half the process and everything's confusing. Give it time and your performance will be hindered. And that is what I saw from these players tonight. A bunch of players that were almost looking at each other saying, what are we meant to do? Press sit back. They were caught on the in-between. Awful. And that is the manager. That is the manager 110%. Why we are always, no matter who the players are, just purchased or old? Why are we always half a yard too slow? Because you don't have a good manager. And the managers you've been buying is a freezing time. They're all shite. Uh, you know, hiring former managers, former players, etc. That ain't going to help your cause. Um, and so, you know, it's just as simple as that. Your sport management. Um, also, by the way, there's not really that many elite managers that will come to Man United. Let's be fair. 
But um, yeah, that's part of the reason. And because you just buy players just the sake of buying them. Um, you have a captain in Bruno Fernandez that is not a captain. Um, although I don't think it was a red card, simply he's not a captain. And so your team is just a scramble of anything. Uh, and because you got good quality players, at some point in time you will win games. They will make an exceptional play. But at the end of the day, that's not enough to be an elite team. Let's take a look. Uh, listen to Saeed as he lost his head as well. What's going on, people? Welcome back to the channel. He's upset. Welcome back to Saeed TV. Oh, my gosh. I'm about to cry. I feel dead inside. Oof. That's tough. Ten Haram has taught me places Ten that I never thought I would go to. What did he call him? Wallahi, it's personal. Ooh. Last week, it was personal with Bruno Fernandes. Now, Ten Haram, yeah? Ten Haram is personal, mate. And anyone who is Ten Hag in now, mate, come and find me. I'm in the car park now. If you are backing this shit, you are an enabler. Yeah? Ooh. You are an enabler. I'm sick of this. Seven points. Three losses. Minus three goal difference. I've been here getting battered time and time again. Back to back at home. It's cold. It's miserable. And I've had enough, mate. It's now Ineos as well. You Ineos absolute, yeah. You're on fraud watch, mate, yeah? I am writing a letter tonight to Ineos, yeah? Because this is what we're going to do right now. We're going to be play petty now. I am writing an Ineos <laughs> letter tonight. This is not good enough. How many more can you take? How many more can you live through? How many? We've seen defeat after defeat after defeat. And yet still, people want to go mad at me for saying, trust the process, mate. Trust the fucking what process? Yeah? There's no what process. process are we watching? Is it a process to get battered week in, week out? Is that the process? Tottenham come here with Werner and Brennan Johnson and bosses. They hardly win here. Fergie said, it's only Tottenham. And yet Ten Hag has given them the license to play around today. He's given them the license to play around today. Look at the Tottenham fans. Mm -hmm. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. They're battering me. Tottenham who don't win anything, are battering me. <laughs> Wallahi Ten Hag, mate. 37% possession at home is a disgrace, mate. It's crimes against football. Yeah? And anyone who's backing this, yeah? That Mark Goldfish, yeah? You fucking Ooh. absolute whopper, yeah? You absolute prick you are, mate. Today, yeah, my man's tweeting about it's the same old faces. He spent 600 million. He has sent 600 million. You dirty copper, mate, who's fucking coercing with that fucking... Who is it again? What agency? That fucking SEG agency you're working with and you've coerced your fucking subscribers to think it's all good, mate. You absolute whopper, mate. I swear down, bro. I swear down. It's personal between me and you as well. I swear... <laughs> Because this guy puts absolute shit on his platform, yeah? And everyone just goes and says, you know what? Whatever Mark Goldfish says, you fucking prick, mate. Now, I've had enough, man. This is personal now. I've been through it. I've been telling people, these trophies here are masking the real problems. I'm a United. They are. Ain't no Carabao Cup, ain't no FA Cup is going to save this guy's job. The football is dire. I'm seeing every club come here and start doing Olays. Oh, man, we're not going to watch the whole thing. He's just uh, yelling and stuff. You can go watch his uh, channel, though, uh, Saeed TV. He's got a lot, of, a lot of subscribers now. He blew up. Um, he goes against uh, Goldbridge all the time. I think Goldbridge, you know, started uh, a lot of these guys as well. So it's, something's happened there, personal. But, um, I mean, a lot of people don't like Goldbridge. That's cool. Uh, and I don't give a damn either way, to be honest. But, um, you know, he is pretty successful. And uh, it is what it is. He is. Now, a lot of people say he's a uh, Forest fan, <laughs> which is funny. I uh, don't know if it's true or maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, and I don't care, to be honest. But regardless, uh, he, do he does make sense on a lot of things that he said, though. A lot of things. I think he's been saying that he wants to hang out, and that makes sense. He needs to. That he needed to be sacked a long time ago. No FA Cup, no Carabao Cup is going to save this guy, he's saying. That's also, I think, uh, correct. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's just a man you, man. Man you, it just shambles, shambles. Um, and um, it, Tottenham are a better team right now. As simple as that. And, and as bad as Tottenham are not, are not, they're not playing great, but they are just a better team than Man United. As simple, simple as, simple as.
And so now, granted, is sacking the manager going to fix it? Probably going to fix something, going to make things probably better. But you got to get the right guy back in um, or the right guy in, period. Who is that going to be? Are there, How many elite managers are out there that will come here and take over? Klopp is never going to come to Man United. What other elite manager is out there? What other manager is out there that can fix these shambles? The, 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 these that can actually rebuild this damn club that is literally on fire. Uh, so uh, no clue, no idea. But you let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'm Chris, the American Mag. Um, and this is Football Uncensored. Uh, so what do you think about those reactions, man? <sighs> Things are getting hot, boy. At, uh, in Manchester right now on the red side of Manchester. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for listening, for watching. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Peace.